and some of those maple poles that I cut out earlier. Uh, I'm going to use these three to make my tripod for my forester's tent. I've got an extra one. Uh, I'm going to use the longest one for kind of the ridge pole. And this one seems like it's got the most. And I'm going to save as much length as possible. I have too much length than not enough, but I also need it to be sturdy. So I'm going to probably cut that off right about there. Get rid of that. If you're not familiar with the plumber's vise, make sure you check that video out as well. Easy way to safely cut through. You can probably get some construction projects out of the rest of that too. Using the GB2 Puko on this trip. That's all right. There's my ridge pole. Get as much length out of these other two. Uh, this one's got a fork right there at the bottom where I don't really need it. So get rid of that fork. And then use that to determine. Oh, sunshine! Sunshine makes me happy. I got a fork about in the same place. We'll get rid of that. There we go. A couple of poles, I'll clean those up and then we can start making our tripod for the shelter. You're already clean. And you're ready. So I'm down by the creek right now and I've got a few projects that I need to do that kind of require a mallet. I've already cut just a small already cut just a small maple mallet uh, that I can use uh, to set up my tarp. I also need to carve some stakes and some toggles uh, and you know do some general bushcraft tasks and one of the first things that I want to do aside from the mallet and the, is you know I want some sort of anvil to set on the ground uh, and with any luck, I'll find something to sit on besides the ground. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I'm hoping is this, this cherry tree has been down quite a while. You can see this maple is actually growing around this dead branch on here. And this is putting a lot of stress on that maple. Uh, this one doesn't look that bad, but this is down. So this is also still up in the air up here. So if I want to take this section right here and try to make kind of a makeshift anvil. So what I'm gonna do is use this as is, as a saw buck, and I'm gonna cut this off and cut this section out. Now I'm not gonna cut right here because then that falls off and then I have to buck this up or I have to stabilize this up so that I can saw this out. What I'm do, I'll do is saw it here, get rid of that, and then saw it there, and the weight will bring it right down. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. So I'm gonna get rid of this section here. Timber. Alright, so that looks good. It's not punky and rotten like I thought it might be. I'm gonna come right up here, do the same thing. Now I've got myself the makings or the beginnings of an anvil to the point where I wish I had my bigger silky. But this will do, this is the one I've got with me. So I got the beginnings of an anvil made of cherry. So found a pretty good seat down here by the creek. That goes down uh, and actually this is spring fit. Uh, and I've got a pipe that accesses the spring. The camp's right up there a little ways. But I uh, figured I'd go ahead and take advantage of this 
nature chair uh, while I make the anvil. Uh, so what I want to do is create kind of a flat surface for this to sit on, on one side, and then the other side I want to be kind of a, a flat surface that's cut out that I can actually use to baton against. Um, so, a couple of ways to think about doing this. Uh, I'll probably set that down. What I want to do is just take my gone boy. <laughs> make some cuts and I'll take those cuts down to probably about the top of the saw blade it don't have to be anything crazy that's what I want on one side and about there on the other give me some stop cuts then what I'll do is I'll make a series of those all the way across and I'll knock those out with a hatchet. Ever wonder what you use for an anvil when you're creating an anvil to use? I guess you use the ground. That ought to do her. Take my hatchet, and then just like with your knife safety, always forward of your blood triangle, watch your follow through, like right there, that's not good, probably more like that, and just start chipping that away. some of this bark so she can start drying out maybe give it a try to flatten the bottom out a little so it sits more stable Real nice, Clark. That'll do. I got my anvil done. I can work on some tent stakes. Nothing you haven't seen me do before. Just throw a stop cut in. You can do it with your knife as well. Throw a stop cut in. Carve a steak notch into that. I'll crown the ends so they don't mushroom out whenever I'm hitting them with the mallet. And then sharpen a point onto the other end. Not too shabby ninja test. Works. Make a few more of those. Run out of room. Ninja test.
And just like everything else, you know, it's traditional stuff. I said it before. Like a carry tent stakes, they don't really weigh that much, don't really take up a lot of room, but you know, a little practice with your knife and carving skills, you know, we buy these expensive knives for bushcraft and then we don't bushcraft with them, you know. So there's that. Not that this one's expensive. This one's actually my design. This is a GB2 the the GB2 Puko. Uh, this one I made, that's the prototype. Uh, it should be being picked up by Pathfinder Knife Shop for production in 2020, so you can get your own. Outstanding 1095 Scandi Grind, full tang. Very simple design, very functional, very good utility. Ninja Test. Alright, that's six out of six. You saw it here first, folks. Also, what I'm going to be creating is uh, are, are some toggles. Uh, I've got about a three inch piece right here and really what I want to do with these is just crown both edges. Crown both ends I should say. Like so. And then I want a channel, kind of a V-notch channel for some bank line to sit in, right in the center. So, what I'll do is roll that at an angle, so that it carves that V-notch in there. One side. Flip it over, angle it the other way, and connect those. Gives me a little channel for the bank line. I can come in and clean that up. Forgot my punky dope. There's my toggle. What I'll do with these toggles is just tie a, a middle of the line clove hitch, put that right inside that channel. And it's just your basic fisherman's knot, this fisherman's loop that I use for most all of my shelters. I'm just going to make a number of those uh, and I'll show you how, to, how I incorporate those into the shelter when I actually get to build it. So I'm going to make several of those. forester tent what I did was a tripod lash up here with obviously the longer pole being the ridge pole uh, and then of course you know my two poles going down and I wanted a true tripod lash on this one because I want this ridge pole to be on top and I want it to be supported by these two bottom poles rather than have it underneath and supported by the cordage uh, because a semi-permanent shelter you know I got to be thinking about especially you know, in September in the Adirondacks, I got to start thinking about heavy snow landing down on this. And this is extremely solid once it's all tacked down. Uh, and that Tent Smith's oil skin tarp uh, is fantastic. One of my favorite tarps to use. But got my tripod lashed, and I use those toggles for buckles. Right there, right there, right there. Of course, a couple down the middle. And then same thing I've got going on up here, going on in the back, except it's a different lash back here. Of course I've got it staked down on all stake points. Which I just carved out some tent stakes. You saw me do that earlier. Then back here I've got a two pole shear lash to create this bipod and this bipod is locked in with this toggle and I'll show you a close up of that. But overall got a relatively low pitch uh, but it's a man-made material uh, as far as the oil skin goes so it's going to shed just fine. It's not like a natural shelter you know, where I'd be worried about a higher pitch to pitch that off. Uh, 
and it has a natural slope back this way so it'll shed water back and away from me so pretty happy with that and that is solid as can be once it's all put together I'll show you how I did that back side real quick so back here on the back side I've actually got a two pole shear lash just to form this bipod and that's not actually secured to this ridge pole at all uh, it's hard to do a tripod lash on both ends you would have to come in and do like a, either a, a square lash to one of these or you could put it underneath if you really wanted to but I want this on top so what I did was this tie out point that comes through here I've got a lark's head going through with my fisherman's loop going to my toggle that's actually coming underneath the bipod and then it's buckled in and I'll show you how to do the buckles and how I do this kind of knock right here, this stop cut, this it's kind of like a stake notch basically that I want that bank line to set in. And what I do is I pull that tight and drop it down in there and that holds tension this way. And then that is tight and that's what's actually pulling up against the bottom of the bipod which cranks this down. So it's made for a quite a solid joint right there once everything's staked out. So that's what I've got going on in the backside. Simple. Uh, traditional tripod lash up front, two pole shear lash in the back, and then this is actually held on by the tension. As that loosens up, I can kind of adjust the bipod in and out. Same thing with the tripod. So that's what's going on back here. I'm going to give you a closer view of this buckle system. So we made the toggles earlier, and that's just a lark's head going through. That's a, a fisherman's loop with a lark's head going through the actual tie-out point of the tarp. And that's on the toggle with a middle of the rope clove hitch. Basically what you're doing is you, you're coming around your anchor and then you're using it like a button. So you go through one way, go through the other, and you basically have just buttoned yourself in. All right, Let's create a window right there. I'm going to come up, slide in one side, and then slide the other side through just like a button. Now I've got that secured, but I want to drag it down here and put some tension on it to pull this tighter. So I'll pull it tight, slide it down into that stake notch I created, and that'll hold tension this way. To make this stake notch, just like any stake notch, whichever way the tension is going to be, that's where you're going to put a stop cut. And I put a stop cut in with my gomboy. And then I just took my knife and actually did an angled cut in to meet that stop cut. And, you know, you can use a baton if you need to. You can take off a lot more meat that way and hit to that stop cut. Or you can just take your time and carve it out by hand. Whatever you want to do. But that's what I've got going on right there. And I did that all around any place that I was using this toggle attachment system.